USD 475 in Junction City, Kansas, is building a reputation as a school district enthusiastic about integrating technology into the classroom. In 2009, SharePoint, software which allows organizations to create collaborative internet websites, was introduced to the faculty as a tool to communicate with students and their parents. Students who are sick from school would be able to go online to SharePoint and find out what work they missed for the day so that they could be ready for school when they come back the next day. Our parents could use it as a way to uh, keep up on their student, checking to see what work uh, they haven't turned in, what work's coming uh, up in case they need to take block leave. Administration encouraged faculty to make use of SharePoint, but not everyone has embraced it. We all know that with new software, the primary mode of instruction comes from a manual. Each new program equals one new manual, which equals time needed to read it. For a teacher, time is a valuable commodity. We have to plan for our instructional time. We have to plan for cat time, tiers, committee. We have committee meetings, department meetings, staff meetings, content meetings, And we only have a 45-minute personal planning period, and within that 45 minutes, we have to complete all of those tasks that are asked of us. And on top of that, be able to learn and implement new technologies and maintain our SharePoint web page. It's a lot to do. In addition to time constraints, there is also a wide range of ability among faculty in terms of their technical savvy. In fall of 2011, all teachers will be required to have minimum standards for their SharePoint web pages, which presents a problem. How to provide SharePoint training that works within a teacher's schedule and presents material in a way that allows for a variety of proficiency levels among its learners. To attack the problem, the ADDI model of instructional design was used. The analysis phase began with surveys sent to teachers and parents. The teacher survey included specific questions about what types of training might be beneficial to them. The parent survey gauged what types of information were most desired. Each teacher's web page was then evaluated using a five-point scale measuring the information included. A teacher welcome, a course syllabus, a calendar, images, and links to appropriate resources or documents. Of the pages evaluated, 65% did not meet the five-point criteria. Based on the results gathered from the teacher survey, web-based training seemed the best approach because it allowed learning to occur anytime and anywhere the learner had access to a computer and the Internet. The development phase started with the creation of a website to deliver instruction and information for students, including technology requirements, a syllabus, resources, and lessons. This website was the central component for training. Six video tutorials were created, one for each of six lessons in the training. Videos included voiceover and visual guidance through each lesson, which was designed to be short and content-specific to maintain learner attention and provide opportunity for success. Each lesson was activity-centered, with learners creating as they watched the tutorial. Many tutorials were included as needed to extend learning. Each lesson included downloadable print materials of information on the website and the voiceover instructions in the tutorials. Implementation was kicked off by emailing a link to the first lesson to all faculty, urging them to complete it within the first week. At the end of the first week, the second lesson was sent. The lessons were staggered so that those teachers who worked at a slower pace or might feel overwhelmed by seeing all of the lessons at once were not discouraged in the first week of implementation. For teachers wanting to move at their own pace, all six lessons were available at the start of the training. In addition to the web-based training, an afternoon classroom experience was offered for those needing additional help or preferring an in-person setting. The same materials used online were used in the classroom and projected on a whiteboard. Instructors trained during the development phase were available to assist students through the lessons. Additional classes were also offered during a school-wide professional development day. In evaluating the program, the training had a larger impact than expected. Using the same five-point scale, there was a 34% increase in the amount of information found on teacher web pages. 
Overall, learner feedback was positive. I found the video tutorials to be very helpful. I could do them in school or at home because they were short enough that I could just do one section at a time. And I like that the PDF file could be printed out to follow along with as, as well. The web-based training will remain available for teachers who want to continue training or were not available to attend the classroom training sessions. With summer coming, more time will be available for teachers to continue building and enhancing their SharePoint web pages to meet the fall 2011 deadline.